the fight that I am most looking forward to this Saturday is Jeff Hughes versus Todd Duffy. Yes, Todd freaking Duffy. There he is. Four plus years since we've seen that man inside the octagon. He is back. The Duff man is back. Todd, how are you? I'm good. I just finished training up here at Couture's. Up in the black room. Oh, yeah. Uh, what's up? I missed you. Where have you been? Yeah. Oh, I've been hanging out in California and Vegas, you know, having a good time. Why have you not fought in four plus years? I just couldn't get it to work out. It's a tough sport. Was it injury related? Was it something else? Uh, yeah, I had an injury. Um, I was supposed to, uh, I think, uh, that like Canada card, that Mockton Canada card last year, I was supposed to get on, but I ended up, uh, falling through the cage at the tough, the, you know, the tough gym. Oh my God. I fell through the cage gap and blew out my knee. So that kind of took some time off for sure. You fell through the cage at the, at the tough gym in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. The old one. How did that happen? Uh, Sparrow Blagoy before he fought junior about two weeks before, maybe a week before. We were going pretty light, but uh, I bounced back, and the floor kind of gave out just enough for my leg to slide through between the cage and the uh, the floor. Oh, my yeah, gosh. Sorry. And, and, and what happened? You tore your knee? Yeah, I ended up blowing out some ligaments. Did you need surgery? Oh, yeah. Wow. Which knee? Yeah, I, uh, I got up. I finished the round. I felt the pop, and then uh, me and Blagoy got into, like, a grappling exchange. And I was like, oh, we got to stop. And then, like, I waited, like, a week or two thinking that maybe I can just kind of get away with not, you know, avoiding surgery. Uh, but it just wasn't, a, it wasn't an option, sadly. Wow. And which knee was this? Ariel. What? Is that what, what? a bad question? It's one of the two. It's okay. one of the two. One of the, I was just trying to paint the entire <laughs> picture. I want to get the facts right. But that's a serious thing. I mean, like, did you consider, like, did you consider legal action? I mean, like, your career was derailed, or was that just a freak accident? No, I mean, it was a, it, I mean, the cage was bad. I think the next week they took the whole place down. Um, okay. it's, I'm not the first person that's got hurt in that, in that cage like that. I know that. Wow. I think there was a fight where a guy got his ankle caught. Um, no, I mean, you sign a waiver when you walk in the door, you know, you kind of take on that responsibility. That gym probably should have been taken down a few months before. It was pretty evident. I mean, it was an, it's an old gym. It's been, been through quite a bit. Right. But, uh, it's, it's just life, you know? Yeah. Um, how much did you miss fighting? How much did you miss, you know, the, the nerves, the feelings, the lights, all that stuff? Oh, I love to be alive, Ariel. Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't, right? Yeah, it's fun. Uh, I miss there, it a lot. Was there ever a point where you thought you might never come back? Uh, early on when Joe was negotiating with me after my uh, last fight, yeah. I just, like, it just didn't make any sense. I couldn't get anybody behind me. Um, I couldn't, it just did not make sense. And then I was worried that I would not be able to make it back. Um, just, but you know, um, it, the new matchmaker Mick came in, he made me, he made me a good deal and I was able to get back in the fight fighting. It was wonderful. So when you say, I was Joe, just worried that it wasn't something that was in the cards, you know, like they made it pretty evident that I didn't have the value that, you know, a normal fighter, you know, I just, it wasn't smart. I just couldn't make, I couldn't make sense of it. And when you say Joe, you're referring to Joe Silva, the former UFC matchmaker, right? Mm -hmm. He hasn't been around for three plus years. That's how long ago it's been. Mm -hmm. That's I mean that's just been a long time. I, I've not been worried about it since Mick got on board. Okay, so but it was yeah. There was a few months where I was like, man, like I may not be able to do this anymore. It's sad. It was it was that was scary. Yeah, it's not something I wanted. It's not something I was, I was just like, oh. So did Mick reach out to you, or once he came on board, did you reach out to him? I can't remember. It's been a long time. Okay. And we did that year. We did the deal like three years ago. I just I had the shoulder surgery and then I had this knee. Right. Uh, he, so, so he gave you a new deal. Yeah. Are you happy with it? Yeah, it's great. Okay. And so here you are. You're back now. Uh, part of you know. Where's Kane? Is he not in the studio anymore? He's gone. Yeah, he's gone. Oh, I missed him. Tell yeah. us about him. He's the man. You weren't watching? No, I was training. Look at me. I know you look so sweaty. <laughs> it's amazing. How much do you weigh? How much do you expect to weigh on Friday? Uh, it always changes fight week. Uh, most of the camp I've been, been between 248 and 244. Wow. I weigh myself every morning and night typically. So. And, and can I just say, I really like the new hairstyle. Really? You're always with compliments, though. It's hard to believe you a lot of the time, you know? Well, I, 
I don't know why you wouldn't believe me. I'm, I feel like I'm a sincere and genuine guy. I, I, I first saw the hairstyle, by the way, on your great Instagram page at Todd Duffy, for those that want to follow up with your comings and goings. Also your Twitter page, I noticed is protected these days. Um, so is I think, it? Yeah. Did you know that? No idea. I haven't been on that thing in, I feel like, years. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but Instagram, you're quite active on. So I was just wondering, like, what the hair... Because I remember you as the, you know, the shaved head guy, RoboCop, right? Yeah, I remember. What happened? You felt like growing it out? Um, yeah. I mean, it's just people are nicer to me, let's be honest. Have you ever grown your hair out, Ariel? People are way nicer. The gas station attendant. Really? The waitresses. Oh, God. Yeah, big why, time. Why do you think that is? Um, prejudice. I don't know. Okay. People are just like we're very, uh, you know, quick to make judgment. I guess. I remember. I, guess I look scared. Yeah, I mean, you may you maybe look a little more approachable, a little friendlier. I don't know, but uh, I think it's a good maybe. look on you. So I hope you keep it. Um, I know you, you know, in the midst of you've had a lot of ups and downs. You also had the the Parsonage Turner syndrome that you were battling. Does that still affect you at all, or are you completely over that? I'm over it personally. Okay. I'm tired of it. Okay. Well, does it still like <laughs> yeah but naturally yeah of course it does uh it's just one of those things you know any injury is going to affect you for a lifetime especially in the sport yeah so any any time like any surgery you're never going to be the same any you know it's that's life that's any injury your body's you know you only got one right but does it affect you in training at all like have you had to change the way you prepare for a fight because of this yeah, but that was that was six years ago, right? So yeah. I, I'm kind of used to it at this point. Like I've, I've adjusted it. I haven't really. It hasn't came to mind in the probably the last three years of training. Okay. Because uh, I've just kind of adjusted to it. I know how to manage it. I don't really. It's just kind of part of life. So, I don't know if you know this, but like I do this show now. It's live, but there's also a TV version of this show that airs Tuesday nights on ESPN two, and we do like a one hour version of this very long show. And at the end of the show, I always do this segment called "Turn Back the Clock," where I look at something that's happening now and kind of look at the history of it or whatever. And so this week's segment is about you and your very sort of sweaty unique. puddle. Wow, that is amazing no. and gross. But you, you've had a very uh, like memorable career, ups and downs. It's been 10 years from the Hague knockout and then the Mike Russell fight and leaving the UFC and over him. In, in the midst of all this, like you ever take a step back and, and just look at this journey? Because, I mean, with you, it's just it's never been boring. It absolutely has never been boring. No, it's not been boring. <laughs> sure has it. Do you ever pop in the old... Well, I don't want to say pop in the old tapes. That doesn't really happen anymore. But do you look back at some of those old fights and reminisce these days? Um, Sometimes I do. It's been... I mean, I haven't watched myself fight probably a year. I probably will this week at some point just to kind of get an idea of what, what, what somebody might expect. Uh, but not really. It's not... I mean, it's, there's a ma major evolution that goes on in 10 years, if you imagine. Sure. Do you feel like a different person? No. Okay, so I guess there isn't. A, I was like a latchkey kid growing up, so I kind of already had my adult hat on, I guess. Right. But there were times where you were like sort of butting heads with management and all that. It, it seems like maybe that's not the case Who? anymore. Who did I actually ever butt heads with, Ariel? Well, you remember the, like you left and the fast track and all this I stuff. I didn't leave. I didn't leave. I got kicked out for okay. a quote-unquote bad attitude, but there was no story behind that for some weird reason. Well, how, how are things now? <laughs> I mean, they're fine. They've always been fine on my end. I've never, I never got to have a, I have one conversation with Dana when they brought me back right before I walked out the way. I was like, Hey man, are we good? Like, is there anything you, you want to sit down and talk about? He's like, no, we're great with a big, huge smile. Um, that's the extent of that entire, that, that entire thing. And I left it at that. Cause I mean, what's it matter? You know, I'm back and I'm, I'm happy to be here. Right. Uh, where do you live these days? Uh, I'm out in Las Vegas now. Okay. When did you move there? Uh, probably about four or five months ago. Okay, why? You have CPI. Financially, it just makes so much sense with the therapy aspect. I've not been able to get two fights because of an injury here or an injury there. So having physical therapy at my, you know, right right there every day is a, is a major big difference. You know, I'm here healthy and I, mean, I made it to fight week healthy. So I haven't done that in a long time. That's where you do like the majority of your training? <laughs> mm-hmm. Get tours and then, and then at the PI both, yeah. And do you bring your coaches there with you, or do you work with coaches from the gym? Uh, both. Uh, I bring in uh, Roddy Price, who's my boxing coach, Peter Pinto, my Muay Thai coach, Glenn, wrestling coach. Uh, yeah, and I bring him up there. We come here. We, you know, it's Las Vegas. It's a little different. You kind of got to, you kind of got to hit hit the little circle. Sure. Where were you living beforehand? Uh, I was out in the Bay in Santa Cruz. 
Okay. Training at AK and CSA, which I can still consider my homes. Uh, that's, you know, that's really where I kind of feel like I really kind of came into my own out there. Uh, without Coach Kirian, I don't think I would have made it back. Um, he'll always be my head coach as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Uh, even if he's not day-to-day involved or whatever it might be, he was a huge influence, and he's, he'll, he'll remain that way. Uh, Kirian uh, Fitzgibbons, right? Yeah. Will he be in your corner Saturday? Sadly, no. They only give us one flight up, so. Oh. <laughs> So you only have one corner man? Yeah, I'll bring, yeah. I mean, I have somebody possibly meet me up there, so. Okay. And, uh, like, you know, it's been a long time, obviously, since you last fought. Like, financially, did you have to get another job four plus years? I would imagine you had to make money some other way, I made right? my money pretty well. And then, like, I, you know, I, like, picked up a client here and there, um, stuff like that, but no. What do you mean by client? Like I would do some personal training here and there, but not, like, I may have two, two three week at best. Okay. But this wasn't like a big concern for you. Uh uh-uh. Okay. And what do you know about Jeff Hughes, your opponent? Legacy heavyweight champion. Uh likes to go the distance, likes to spin about twice around, kicks about twenty percent of the time. Um boxer karate style. Um he's exciting. I mean, if you're spinning, you're you're fun, right? Right. <laughs> uh he does train out of Steep Ace Camp, I believe, but I don't know if he lives out there, so I don't know his actual extent of that. Uh, I mean, he's he's he was a legacy. I think five fights he had the belt for. That's that's pretty uh, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, he's you know he's a tough opponent. He's game. Do you I get, don't know a lot about him. You know, it's not, actually, not a lot to, know. to be honest. I, I actually feel like you do know a lot about him. I mean, considering I guess right, but there's just not a lot to not a lot to uncover. Right. Um, I've had a, you know, I mean, yeah, you ask questions, of course. It's smart, sure. right? Do you get the sense, Todd, that like people miss you, that people are really excited? Like, I'm genuinely, I hope you feel this. I'm genuinely excited to see you back. Do you get the sense that the fans, there's a lot of new fans in the sport since you last fought, you know, the Connor era, all that stuff. Do you feel like people miss you, or do you think that people like forgot about you or don't know about you? Uh, I think a lot of people don't know about me now, but yeah, I definitely, I mean, every day of my life since I've, in the last four years, somebody, some strangers asked me, when are you coming back? Where are you? Why aren't you fighting? Um, yada, yada, yada. I mean, yeah, of course, I, I definitely, I can tell that uh, I haven't been forgotten. That's for sure. Um, somehow I ended up on the main card. You know, there's two ranked heavyweights fighting the same night and they're not on the main card. <laughs> um, I don't know. That says a lot, right? Yeah. I didn't make it to the open workouts, but I did make it to the Air Hawani show. Uh, <laughs> Who needs that, right? Who needs the open workouts? Right. This is the real stage. Right. So, I mean, yeah, of, of course, obviously, uh, I still have a pretty heavy fan base, it looks like. Uh, and I'm, I'm very thankful for that. I appreciate the patience. Um, it's been a tough road, but I made it, you know. I, I have to be honest. Like, I texted you on Friday. Uh, I think I just wrote, hi, Todd. I didn't know if that was still your number because it's been a while. I really didn't think you were going to write me back. I always wasn't really quite sure what you thought of me. So I thought maybe you'd be like, ah, screw this guy or wrong number. So I'm really genuinely happy to see you. Oh, Ariel, I thought we were friends. Do you remember that last interview? I think it was the last interview, and it was terrible. Yeah. Remember when I was trying to call out Frank, and I couldn't get him to take the fight, and maybe an hour before he took the fight, and we just had no smoke. <laughs> <laughs> we had all these great lines to give him, and he just he ruined it. It was great on his part, I guess. Right. You remember that interview? Vaguely. Oof. I mean, it's been a while. It's been like four and a half years, right? I've done a lot of yeah, interviews maybe. since then. Um, but I appreciate uh, that you remember it. Uh, by the way, speaking of that Frank fight, like, the fact that that was the last one, that that's the one where it kind of stopped that. Does that eat at you? Does that bother you? Do you still think about that fight a lot? I'd love to get it back. Of course, you want all those back. Um, not really, though. It doesn't, like, eat at me in any particular way. Okay. Um, I did not expect it to go down the way it did. I mean, but you never do, right? Right. Um, he came out aggressive, which was a big... Again, I hate to say it. Every time I think about that fight, it's like, man, how can you be shocked that somebody that came out to fight? <laughs> Right. Is there a chance we're going to see a different Todd Duffy in this fight? Like, have you evolved to the point where you're a different kind of fighter? I don't know. You know, it's, uh, I think my skill set has been much greater than I've probably typically shown in fights, either because they've been too quick or just the way the fights have kind of played out. Um, but no, I mean, I'm, I'm still, still the same guy, I would think, right? I don't probably know. Probably just a little sharper, a little better, a little more mature. Yeah. Do you believe in ring rust? I, mean, I haven't stopped training. I have, no, I don't really think ring rust is a thing. I've had big gaps between fights before. Excuse me. Um, so, no, I don't. 
I don't think that's like a major factor. It could be, maybe. I don't know. If someone's just learning about Todd Duffy now for the first time, what's the one fight that you want them to watch before this fight on Saturday? What's the quintessential Todd Duffy fight, the best fight of your career thus far? I think it's going to be this Saturday. Ooh, good answer. But if I want to get ready for you, if I want to like watch you, a primer, if you will. I don't know. Would you not say I'm the most exciting heavyweight in the division, Ariel? Well, the Why thing do you we, miss me? I miss you dearly because, Why do you with, miss me? because it's always kill or be killed with you, right? Let's be honest. You're either knocking someone out or you're getting knocked out. But it's never boring. It's never been a dull affair. It's never been like, oh, one of those heavyweight fights that just drag on. You come in there. More often than not, it ends in the first round. You've given us incredible moments. Fastest knockout in heavyweight history, seven seconds, right? I mean, you've, you've really come and, and delivered. Plus, there's been some drama along the way that just, there's like an aura around you, right? You're a specimen. You're built like a freaking RoboCop. I mean, you're like, there's just a lot about you that people have always been drawn to. How about that? Yeah, fair. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'll never forget. I agree. Sure. I want to be put on the fast track. Remember that? Yeah, man. I wish I would have fought Paul. He's friends with me. I'm real good friends with Paul Buentel now. I still wish I would have kicked his ass. Yeah. Uh, I was one quarter of someone shot away from beating him up. I just didn't know any better. I wanted to just protect my back, so I ended up pulling out of that fight. What does Paul Buentel do now? Uh, Paul's the man. He's, uh, he's living in San Jose with his wife, Sia. Uh, we were training together like two years ago. He took a fight in a, a couple fights in Russia, I believe. I helped him get ready for those. Um, he's working. He's living life. He's loving life, you know. I think he's got a couple businesses he's running. Uh, I don't want to get you know, Those are his details, not mine. Sure, sure, sure. I just <laughs> haven't heard that name in a long time. Always one of the, the, the good guys in the game, so it was nice to hear from him. Well, I have to say... Yeah, I, I think he knocked out Eric Prendel recently, and then... I don't know. He had like two fights over in Russia. I helped him get ready for it. I just don't remember. I remember one was like short notice and then Eric, I think. Okay. Well, I must say, uh, great to see you again, Todd. I'm uh, very No, let's talk about the heavyweight division. Oh, what's okay. new in the heavyweight division? <laughs> uh, what do you mean? Like, what's going on? Was there anybody exciting? Well, there's Steve. Is that why you're so excited about me? Steve is out there, right? Um, mm -hmm. DC is still out there. We had Kane saying that he's going to come back, so that's exciting. Uh, Derek that's Lewis is coming back as well, so that's fun. G JDS is coming back against Alexander Volkov, uh, so there's a lot there. We're all still here. You're all still there. We even have uh, arguably the best heavyweight on the planet, Ryan Bader, coming up next on the program. Oh, nice. Yeah. What do you think of that? 205 are dominating the heavyweight division. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, Ryan's got a great left hook. Uh, he's a great wrestler. Um I don't think he's fighting the, the best heavyweights yet. I think that Russian cat might give him some problems. Right. I want to be just, just be Tim Johnson. Minikov, yeah. Yeah, Minikov. Yeah, he's good. Um, yeah, but that's interesting. But that's not of your concern. You're a heavyweight in the UFC, and you return this Saturday. UFC Vancouver, beautiful city, by the way. I don't know if you've ever been there, but one of the all-time great Tired cities. It. Yeah? You've been I'm there? A I'll be paying Canadian taxes this Saturday. I'm a Canadian this weekend. Beautiful. There you go. So we, we welcome you with open arms, Todd. Thank you for doing this. Good to see you again. All right, thank you, Ariel. Good luck. Good to see you, man. Hello, everyone. It's Ariel Hawani. I just came here to thank you for watching our ESPN YouTube channel. It's the best. You know what else is the best? The ESPN app. You can get highlights, analysis, all that stuff and more. And if you want premium content and live streaming sports, there's only one place for all of that. It's ESPN+. Plus.